Hey everyone, what's up? Well, today's video, everyone's been excited to see this. An all new tarantula feeding video. So this is feeding video 106. Now before I go on to the video, a lot of people ask me how often I feed these tarantulas. Well, basically look at these feeding videos because these are my live schedules. Whenever you see a new feeding video, that's when I last fed them. So it hasn't been featured since a month now, since my last feeding video. And it's time to feed all the critters again. Sweet. And the only ones I'm not going to be feeding in the video is the centipede, my Scolopendra alternans, who hatched her baby. So I'm going to be updating you on that. And my lovely 5-inch Bialbiceps. You're going to see that one. That is so lovely. Okay, so alphabetical order uh, this time. So let's get to it. Oh yes, and uh, mind the noise, it is thundering outside. Right girls? Ooh, my pool is overflowing. That ain't a good sign. And the wind actually dropped down the solar blanket. Okay, now for some business now. This is my Canthuscuria Brocklehursti, the giant white banded. Sasa, my 7 plus inch female. Actually, I'm surprised you didn't see it. No? There we go. There, that's a nice, nice size tarantula. Nice size tea. This is Desire, um, a male Acanthoscuria geniculata, Brazilian giant white knee. Now, tarantulas, they hunt by ambush. So let's see if he's going to get it. Oh, yes, definitely. Love that attack. Very hungry eaters, these geniculatas. And by next molt, he's going to be a mature male. Now, moving on to my Afono Palma Calcodes, Desert Blonde. This is the female. Ooh, nice. Marilyn the second. Did a great job. Okay, so not many of my AVICs are interested in eating my Geraldi and my AVIC AVIC. So let's try my Vicularia Leta, the Puerto Rican Pinto. Uh, this is a female named Molly. Oh, and there she goes. Very defensive AVIC, but certainly a pretty good Weber. Here is Albert, my male. Uh, it's time to enjoy the scenery. Uh, Brachypalma albiceps, the Mexican gold red rump. Let's see if this guy is willing to eat. Hmm. Here we go. This is a juvenile around two and a half inches. Sexed male. Now I'll show you my female. I can't feed her since she just mostly molted two days ago, but let's have a look at her. This is a five and a half inch, freshly molted, mature female. Brachypoma albiceps. Mexican gold red rump. You can see now she went from a slightly brown color around her legs to a deep black color. Red hairs on the abdomen like your bee vagans. And a surprising, outstanding, and it really stands out, goldish carapace. And that's where the name comes from, the gold red rump. Fantastic looking brachy. It's a shame that I won't be able to feed her since she just molted. So I'm going to wait five more days. Usually when teas molt, I give them about a week before I try to feed them. Adults or slings. Aragog, a curly hair, Brachypalma bopolosum. 
one of uh, Logan's females. <laughs> yeah, loves to eat. And you can really see why they call it the curly hair. A tea that has a permanent bad hair day. <laughs> yeah, this is a three and a half inch female. Leon and Claire. Oh, you know where this is going, right? Yeah, I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. So these are my pair of Mexican flame knee tarantulas, Brachypelma erratum. That was Claire. Nice shot. And let's give her future boyfriend, Leon. Whoa, that was awesome. Look at that. Kind of like the Smithy, except you have different leg patterns, and these are a lot more skittish. Bought them both from Tarantula Canada three years ago as a half an inch, and right now they're around two and a half inches and already showing their full adult colors. Alrighty. Look. Whoa! Holy hell! That scared Amelia to bits. I don't know if she's going to eat her after that. Wow, that is a huge thunder. Oh yeah, definitely. Mexican painted red leg, Brachypelma Emilia. Fantastic species. And I really love this species because of their black triangle on their carapace. And they're not very big, four and a half inches is pretty much as big as this is going to get. And they're pretty fairly Hannibal, sometimes a little bit skittish, but great alternative to a B. smithy. Jeez, that scared the pants out of me. Okay, Brachypelma Classy. Mexican pink. She is a beauty. One of my star attractions in my feeding videos because this one always eats. Oh, look at that. Petunia. Fitting name, right? Because of her pink all around her legs. Even though it does come a bit orange on the camera. The most iconic tarantula in the hobby is the Brachypelma smithy Mexican red knee. Now this is Athena, 5 inch female. She's a pretty slow hunter. Scarlet's over here. Shaking her booty. Here, Scarlet. Oh, nice. Sucks I don't have that much light in here, but I think there we go. As you can see, she's freshly molted. I just saw some lightning. And hopefully the thunder won't scare her like I beat Melia. Here's Annette. She is pretty skittish. A Brachypalma Vagans. Mexican Red Rump. <laughs> Just look at her. She's running a marathon and she's eating. Not to tea that multitasks. <laughs> Sweet. This is how big Annette will be when she becomes an adult. This is Morticia, 7 plus inch female. Same species. Slam. There we go. Man, she's chunky. Largest Brachypelma that you're going to find in the hobby.
This is Kalinka. She is a Brachypalma verdesi, Mexican rose gray. <laughs> Female. Here is Dr. Cossack. Oh, Mega Man 4. Huge fan of that. Bought for 20 bucks at Tarantula Canada. Thought it was a male, then I checked her, his molt at the time, and ended up being female. So, let's see how the doctor will mange his prey. Oh, maybe so. There we go. If you mate a Vagans and Verdesi together, you're going to get this type of tarantula. Uh, this is a hybrid. Brachypalma Vagans Cross Verdesi, also known as a Mexican Fantasy. Now, another tutorial for those of you um, who may not know what a tarantula looks a tarantula looks like in pre-molt. Uh, this is an example. So this is Fantasia, again lovely name. You can see that near her bald spot, which is right over here and right over here, you can see a lot of blue patches. Well, when this that means is that your tarantula will be molting in due time. Usually it takes somewhere between 7 to 14 days. And during this stage, you're not allowed to feed them, or you're not supposed to feed them, because they're not going to be interested in eating. Now, notice that she's building a lot of webs on this area here, so she's probably going to be molting right over here. So, no feedy. Alright, this Kilobrachys guanaciensis puts my GBB to shame. Look how much webs she built. And, oh my goodness, she's getting large. I don't know if that is an extra molt there, but I can say now she's getting to be a big girl now. Julin. Oh yeah, displaying her pissiness. I wish my camera wasn't that blurry. There we go. Yeah, almost five, nearing six inches now. All right, this is a nice looking tea. This is a Cirtheracanthus Livingstoni, the Livingston's tea. And Shannon has appropriately named her Mystery. And I kind of like the name because she was the unknown specimen that I got a few years back in the expo. Good girl, Mystery. I just love the red hairs that surrounds her legs. Critophilus Ramsey, Cuban Pygmy. Watched Hell's Kitchen last night, and Mary is going to be with the final two, and I hope John is too. Because he's a pretty good guy. There we go. I should have called him Gordon, but I think Tech Tech is a wonderful name that uh, Luke chose for me. After all, I am a huge Zelda fan. Very underrated tea in the hobby, and I don't understand it's been on TC's price list for so many years and not anyone's biting on these guys. I bought one and oh my god, I'm so impressed with it. Pretty nice grower and has an appetite to match. Alright, this one I'm gonna actually update for you guys in film. Uh, this is my Cyclosternum fasciatum, the Costa Rican tiger rump, Stella. She's not really the greatest of eaters, but I have a lot of female uh, subscribers that watch my channel and I want to show them one of my pink teas. Oh, maybe she will be hungry. Uh, I had her ever since she was a baby four years ago, and she's pretty much adult size. Maybe she's probably going to grow an inch or two, but not very much. Hmm, as I thought. Not hungry. But she's incredible. Yasmin, PZB, 
Pink Zebra Beauty. Wow. She hungry. Look at her fangs. Here's Pink Floyd, the mature male Ecamprostratus. Right, you can see his tibial hooks and his bulbous pedipalps. All right, Phobus rufescens, the burgundy skeleton, and he's certainly getting some leg span now. Look at that, he caught it in mid-air. Now I think this is a suspect male. So I'm going to name him Cleveland from Family Guy. <laughs> Howdy folks. Oh, I just can't do I just can't do Family Guy impressions, sorry. <laughs> but it's a very cool species to um, see on video since don't get to see much of these in captivity. Since most of the most common ones are the E. Moranus skeleton and the Sauronathus, which is the blue fang. Right now for some Gramistolas. Now this is my Pulchra male, Brazilian black. He ain't no problem. Let's try my lovely female that recently molted. <laughs> wow, just amazing. All right, let's see if she's gonna eat. Looks like the molt was perfect. All right, let's see if I can try to get some more worms. Now I'd love to use B. dubia roaches, but unfortunately in Canada, it's hard to come by for them. All right, this is her first feeding since she molted. I'm pretty sure that she's gonna take it. She better. Oh yes, there we go. Slow and steady. Everyone who knows what those ones are. Gramasola pulker peas. Chaco goldeny, this is peach. This is her sister Wendy. Wee bit smaller, but not by much. Another very strong eater. Watch this. Ooh, nice threat posture. Yeah, Wendy's isn't too friendly. And the largest of my Pulcher Peas trio of females. This one is Charlotte. Yep, Charlotte's Web. This is another most popular tea in the hobby. Everyone usually starts off with these guys. Uh, these are rose hairs, Grandma Stola Rosea. Here's Talia. I don't think she's going to eat. She's like on her fifth month of fasting. No idea if she's going to molt or not, but uh, we'll see what happens. Lois, my redhead female, isn't interested in eating. Oh, well, we'll see. The tables have turned on the superworm. Will he survive or will not? Eh, figures. Ignoring as usual. It's Michaela, a lot larger than Talia. And watch this. She is the polar opposite of her. Eh, she'll eat. 
just don't understand, but you have to expect with rose hares, they really go on erratic feeding patterns. Sometimes they'll just eat normally, and then next minute is that your rose hare won't eat. Well, this is normal, because that's what they naturally do. So I wouldn't worry too much if your admin is plump. Sweet. Five gallon tank, which is pretty sufficient for a rose hare. You don't need anything more than a 10 gallon. That's a little bit too much. Another one that eats like a horse. This is Morris Rose, my male red face. Had this guy ever since he was a half of an inch spiderling in 2009. Now it's 2013. And he's around two and a half inches. Now, the reason why I mention that is that a lot of rose hairs, sometimes the pet stores will tell you that there's about a year old, but this is four years old, and you can see he's nowhere the size like Michaela and Talia is. They're at least a good eight to ten years. This is a pumpkin patch, Haplopus species Columbia large. Yeah, and named her Kina. Now, Kina is a character from The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Uh, the place where you have to go to the bar and you have to, you know, like hire a molt for the pumpkin patch. And that's what I named her. I come up with the good names for these guys. Very easy to keep. And next molt, uh, she is due for a rehouse. This is my little teeny weenie. Heterotheli gabonensis. Now, this is the smallest tarantula that I have in captivity. He is, or she, or I'm not sure of the sex yet, is around at least a good sixth of an inch. Now, I'm feeding these guys the carpet beetle larva that you always get when you get your batch of crickets. You can see it's a really speck of dust. You really can't see her very well, but there we go. Heterotheli gabonensis, the gabon dwarf. And they only get up to having a two inch or two and a half inch leg span as a adult female. And then males will have about an inch and a half. Very small tarantula. And there you go. Smallest tea that I have so far. And you're looking at it. Podra venatoria, brown huntsman spider. Just like that. Victoria is the only female that I have. My other male unfortunately passed away due to old age. Wanted to mate her, but I was waiting for her to molt, and she hasn't molted yet. Holotheli Incy, Trinidad Olive. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Woo! Nice one. We'll make a Mythbuster video on this. But, I want to show you up close and personal before I don't have the opportunity to film her in the feeding video. Oh, sorry, I'm in the Mythbuster video, but this is an adult female, and this is how large they get. Not very big, and a 16-ounce deli container suits these guys well. All right, this here is the Lampropalma valisiopis, Singapore violet that I recently rehoused. Ooh. Yeah, definitely showing her skittishness. Oh, she's cool and she's blue. True. This one here is my Lassiodora difficilis, the Brazilian fire red bird eater named Dora the Explorer. Here we go. She's around six and a half inches didn't really go through a successful molt as you probably have seen in past videos. She's missing a palp. But that doesn't stop her from being one of my most vicious, I mean, not really vicious, voracious eaters. 
yet. Featured in nearly almost all my international feeding videos except for exceptions of a few. Here's Necroth, my male El Klugi. Bahia Scarlet Bird Eater. <laughs> Excellent. 7.30 now, it's still raining. This is another popular tea in the hobby and a great alternative to Etherophosa. Very easy to care for. Salmon Pink Bird Eaters, Lassidora Para Hibana. Or commonly we know them as LPs. Nothing to do with Let's Plays though, because they have the same initials. Alright, this is Daniela. She is my largest. I think she's missing. She's the largest LP. There we go. She figured, oh, what am I doing? Eating the wrong thing, and there we go. At least uh, five and a half, six inches, and Lassidora Power Hibanas are known to having a 10 inch leg span. So this is about half of what she is supposed to be. This one here is Goma, my other LP. <laughs> that was fast. My smaller one had around four inches. And Daisy, the bulkiest one, nearing as big as Daniela. <laughs> Here's a nice megalomorph that just freshly molted. I think she should be okay for feeding. Uh, this is the Linotheli megatheloides, the Brazilian diplorid, which is a type of funnel web. Here's Nadia Nandu Chromatis, the white striped bird eater. Sweet. One always puts a smile to my face when she attacks. Uh, this is Ocean, appropriate name. My Brazilian blue dwarf beauty, Oligosteri diamantinensis. Oops. There we go. Fast, eh? Ooh, looks like... Uh she has her piece of car old carabay stuck to there. I'm not going to leave her. I'm just going to leave her alone. Because I might actually harm her if I try to do that. Ah, oh, nuts. I missed the attack on this one. Uh, Orphanaceous Filipinus, which is the Filipino orange. Formerly a Celino Rackies. I did not think this one was going to eat. Too bad. Very cool species. Another dwarf uh, gets up to having a three, maybe three and a half inch leg span. My only tea from the Philippines, and I have a lot of Filipino subscribers that like to see their local tarantula eating in front of my care. Sweet. This one here is a Panthibedius ultramarinus, Ecuadorian purple pink femur. Lauren or Gus. That will be its name once I be able to sex this one. A little too young to sex at the moment. Alright, this is my only Australian species at this time. This is my Phlogius crassipeeps. Queensland whistling spider. From down under. Nice. Now this one here is around a four and a half to five inch female. And she made a big burrow. I dug, I dug her out to show you guys since I wasn't able to feature her in the last tour video. Here is Don Manuel, my male, Formictopus erratus, the Cuban bronze. It's a pretty male.
he went the wrong, wrong way. That's my boy. That's how you're supposed to get it. Alright, everyone. The spawn from hell. <laughs> from Mictopus Concerides, the Haitian Brown Bird Eater. Gee. Well, at least no threat postures, at least from the last one. She's pretty chill that time, but oh boy. It's not something you would want to cross paths with. Evil tea. My lord, I can't believe this. Another molt looks to be. Formictopus platus, the Red Island Burbier. Or Caribbean. Your choice of the common name. Hungry as ever. Quick growing. I had this one since... I think early this year. Or late last year. It's growing really quickly. Alright, now for the Pokies. My favorite. Here is my beautiful Pocotheria Barra. Or Cephasca Lowland. Ivory Lowland Ornamental. Now Charmaine is a usually good eater, and you can see she attacked the Superworm with little difficulty. You can see why it's my favorite Pokey, because just of the dark contrast colors typically when see in you know your traditional Regalis and Fasciata. Speaking of which, I have to see how my Fasciata Mature Male is doing. That's the only one I don't have in my collection anymore. Well, when you see a lot of webs near a pokey, I guess not hard to look, right? Pocotheria Formosa Salem Ornamental. What the heck was she doing? That is so funny. She's like, this molt is mine. You can't have it. And you can't sex it. You got me, everyone. And it's like, hey, take your stupid molt. I will do. Thanks for mangling it up, Salem. Okay, this is what you want. I know you're hungry, but you're going to have to wait, sweetie. Well, I guess I just peed her off, but that was so weird. That was really weird. Or maybe now she wants it. Wow. Strange. Right now this one. A mouthful. Pocotheria Hanuma Vila Samika. Ramashworm Ornamental. And don't worry about the spelling, guys. I'm going to include all the names on the video description. So you'll know exactly what tea you should be looking for. Ta-da! Alright. This one here is a P. Metallica Goody Sapphire Ornamental. Now, this is going to be very hard to make out, but you do make out the blue, which Metallicas are famous for. Oh yeah, definitely on drugs. Look at her. <laughs> She's doing the exact same thing as last feeding video. It's so hilarious. And you know, people ask me about P. Metallica being good beginner as well. Well... I don't really tend to recommend them as for beginners because they're pretty expensive for a first tarantula. Uh, they're pretty fast, as you probably saw. Uh, they do have a painful bite. And yeah, they're pretty defensive, pretty mean. Mine's just pretty skittish. But yeah, that was fun. Huh. 8.30 now, and 
It's all better now. Thank God for the thunderstorm, it's over. That was scary. Hey, Mia? Oh no! Don't tell me! Oh, you look fresh! Did you molt? Woo! She molted! Wow! This is crazy, everyone. Molt City! And I was kind of waiting for her to, to finally uh, molt because her last molt was right after feeding video 72. And you know, now it's 106. So I think it's about time that she molted, and she did. Let's see if she's hungry. What a beautiful specimen, like five inches at least. Okay, that one didn't... That one was a fail. Let's try this time. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on, Miranda. Wow, she looks lovely. Mmm! Booyah! I want to say bam, but that's Rob C's trademark. And but fantastico. Muy bueno. Alright, Pocotheria regalis, Indian ornamental. This is Zelda. Not that good this time. Yeah, she is huge. She's a good... Almost eight inches. Eight and a half now. Wow. Truly a masterpiece of art. Why is her abdomen so shrunken like that? Huh. Let me guess. She probably molted. Let's see. Uh, yep. I see some legs. <laughs> wow. Sweet. Here's my Pocotheria rufolata, red slate ornamental. Let's, let me turn to my app. There we go. You can probably see her colors. Now, I do suspect that she's in pre molt You can tell that all of her leg patterns are kind of faded out in color. She looks very drabby. And I've seen that she's building a lot of webs, so this is, could be a good sign that she's going to molt. Now, it's been a while since I last seen my roof a lot of molt. Uh, I'm not sure of actual date where I recorded. But let's see if she's going to take the super. My money is that she's not going to take it. But I can't wait for her to molt. She's going to be sweet to look at. Rufalata and Ornata are the largest pokies, 10 inches, so it's pretty common. Don't bite me. Alright, it's 904. Put the solar blanket in the water. Now we're going to feed a couple of more teas. Since um, three hours now, I've been feeding them. So this is Salmopolis Cambridge, I turned at Chevron. Huge female named Trina. And I think one of my YouTube subscribers asked me if there's any green teas. Well, basically that's one of them. Here's Josie, Salmopolis Armenia, Venezuelan Sun Tiger. Oh, she's going for the wrong thing. I'm not sure if she's going to eat after that. Maybe. Good girl, Josie. Not as big as the P. Cambridge, but it's still a very uniquely colored tree. And the Nike stripes on her legs. That means it's the fast one. Gotta be careful when you're dealing with these ones. Very fast and pretty nasty. Alright, in the hole is my Ginger Ninja. Carmella, the OBT, Trineochilis Marinus red form. It's the one that I mated with Pamela's mature male and she ate him. 
She's secluding herself. Trying to get that super worm down. Ah, oh, there we go. She grabbed it. Uh, let me get some extra light for you guys. To see. Yeah, this is an OBT. Very female. Keep you posted on this to see if uh, she's actually going to be gravid. Alright, since now we're in S, I thought I should update you on the Scolopendra alternans, the giant Haitian centipede. Uh, still the same as before. Little baby centipedelings crawling. Chew. The beauty of nature. I hope she's in eating him. Yeah, there's a lot of them in there. There's at least a good 20, 30. And I'm not going to feed her. Hot diggity dog! Oh my goodness, another molt! Another big tea. This is the Cerecopama rebronitans. Panamanian red rump. Wow. This is like a larger skittish form of uh, bee wagons. Okay, Roberta is her name. Let's see if she will eat. Usually Cerico Palmas are really cool eaters. Definitely very skittish. Man, she's hot. She's as black as my bee. G. Pulchra. Look at that. Man. She has like a million bucks. See, the only way to tell if you have a Cerico Palma rub is that they don't have the clear portion on their carapace like a B. Vaggins does. Yeah, I guess she'll find it. Adorable, man. Another evil tea of mine, almost as worse as my peak in Cerides, is my Stramata Palma Calciatum, the feather leg baboon. Great. No problem there. This is the juvenile, same species. Bingo. Xena the Warrior Princess. This is Tap Gigas, Orange Tree Spider. You call them Tappies. And T. Gigas is definitely one of the fastest tarantulas in the hobby. So you've got to be careful if you own these guys. So that was the female. Now the male's turn. There we go. Folks, this is the last tappy I have in my collection. Tapnikinius Sancti Vincenti, St. Vincent's Tree Spider. As you can see, Ugh. Very impressive spider. Alright, so you've seen the smallest tea that I have. Now, unfortunately, Gretel is not interested in eating, but a lot of you will ask me which is the largest tarantula that I have in my collection, and it's this guy right here. I mean, this gal. Gretel. Theraphosa sturmi. The burgundy goliath bird eater. She's around 9 to 10 inches in leg span. Yeah, she kicks hair. It's normal. I just offered her two super rooms and she totally neglected it. So, 
cage is basic 10 gallon tank with peat moss as substrate, water dish, hide, and some fake plants as decor. And a lot of people ask me about humidity tips. Um, I said that in Feeding Video 104. I guess I'll repeat it for those of you uh, who need more help. So basically I have her mesh guard as her s cover. And what I do is I put plastic uh, papers on it. And thereby doing that I block the ventilation. And because of that the humidity is going to retain much more. Now the way I do of uh, the humidity for these species is that I pour water over the substrate and let the bottom layers get wet a little bit. Now it depends on how often you do this. Sometimes I do this once every two weeks. I just uh, look at the substrate. If it's too dry I, I decide to miss it again and I keep doing that. So there are some tips for you. Now back to the feeding. I'm giving her tomorrow a better cage this one here is Thrixopelma sanulum, cobalt red rump, marin. Such an impressive tarantula. And happens to be very docile, as you've seen in an earlier video what I when I handled her. Very calm. Let's try a Viridaceous species, Madagascar. It's a fishing spider. Mmm, that was awesome. There we go. Nice true spider. And last but not least, Genesis the Zenitha Simonis, the Colombian Lesser Black. Got a superworm with her name on it. What an awesome way to end the feeding video. Hey, little Maggie. How are you? Roll over. Sit. Paw. Paw. Sit. High five. Speak. Speak. Come on. <laughs> There's Maggie, nine-year-old female Chih Tzu. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Let's get Haley now. Haley. Boy, am I spoiling them. <laughs> They're eating romaine lettuce. Now, it's not the iceberg lettuce that has too much water in there. That's not good for guinea pigs since all they'll do is urinate and it has no vitamins, at least with romaine lettuce, it has some sort of vitamins in there. Hey Maggie, you decided to join us. Nice feeding frenzy and a thunderstorm that's now over. Sweet. Well everyone, I do hope you enjoy this thundering feeding video. Now the next video, everyone's been patiently asking me to make videos of Silent Hill 3. Very action-packed series. And that will be starting to be filmed as of tomorrow. While my teas eat, my dog Maggie, and my cute guinea pigs eating their romaine lettuce, I have another mouth to feed, and that's moi. So, I'm gonna go have some supper. It's 9.48 uh, p.m., took around four hours to feed all those teas. And I do hope you enjoy the feeding video. Thunder and all.